Hey, Tourpreneurs, it's Mitch Bach. And just a quick note before we begin today's episode, Tourpreneur is currently sponsored by Google. We're thankful for their support of our community, and we are offering with them a completely free course helping you unlock the power and potential of Google's Things to Do program, which is specifically helping tour operators add their tours to Google in new ways that gives you new exposure and more direct bookings. To learn more, go to tourpreneur.com slash Google. And as always, show notes, more resources, links to our newsletter, our business coaching community, and so much more are available on tourpreneur.com. Now to the episode. Welcome to another Tourpreneur podcast. In this episode, I am joined with our very own Pete Syme, and he is going to discuss how he grew his business through a seldom used social media platform in our industry, LinkedIn. And he's going to advise how he managed to generate six-figure sums through LinkedIn through his multi-day tour experience business. So this will offer some great insights from a very old Pete Syme. And it's if you're a multi-day tour operator looking for other ways and other avenues to generate revenue and grow your business, this is an episode you do not want to miss. So LinkedIn, you've had some success with it recently? Yeah, uh, LinkedIn is a platform that's sort of forgotten about by the tours and activities industry. People tend to focus on the, the BTC platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. And I think both me and you are in agreement that Facebook is a fantastic platform for uh, tour and activity mm-hmm. operators to master. Yep. But LinkedIn tends to be forgotten. I totally understand why LinkedIn's been forgotten because I was an early adopter. I joined LinkedIn in 2003. So I was one of the very first people on it. I did nothing on it until about 2006. In fact, I think I deleted my profile, reloaded my profile in 2006 and started to treat it a bit more serious then. Went through a little bubble where I did some business on it, sort of forgot about it for years on end again. And then as the profile of LinkedIn itself started to grow, uh, I think it was acquired by Microsoft or Mm something in recent years, I started to go back in and play with it and see how it could impact on on my business yeah. uh, and by definition therefore i had to carry out lots of actions to try and make it a uh, more productive for the business uh, in simple terms and I, I try to simplify everything down as simple as possible what is linkedin linkedin to me is a database now because i'm gray and old i remember when i used to go and have to buy databases to find people, email address, phone yeah. numbers, to contact them, whereas LinkedIn gives me 25 million, just in the UK, contact addresses yeah. and ways to access people who can influence their businesses and, and what we get involved in. So in the very simplistic terms, it is a world-class B2B database, no matter what industry you're in. Obviously, we're interested in the tours, activities and attraction industry, but for any industry, it is a world-class mm-hmm. database in a simple in the most simplistic form. However, like any database, if you don't use it, you don't get anything. And I don't know the percentages, but the vast majority of people build a profile on LinkedIn, either good or bad, and we can come into profiles in a minute, and they leave it there, and they expect stuff to come in. And you may, uh, in fact, my son was recently approached in LinkedIn and his profile's not particularly good. He's not put much effort in it, even though I told told him to. He was approached (laughs) with some recruiters soon. So obviously recruiters use it massively to try and recruit people. Uh, And if you're wanting to be recruited, you have to design your profile in a certain way. Mm -hmm. But if you want to attract business, I would suggest you'll be creating your profile and doing work in a very different way from someone who wants to be recruited or yep. headhunted into a different business. Yeah, I know from, from my own business's point of view, we use it all the time for recruiting and stuff like that. No, yep. we, we don't use agencies or anything for recruiting. Yep. Everything is just done manually through LinkedIn. Yep. So to keep your profiles up to date, um, yeah, no, that's, the, the profile in simple terms is, is your personal website. Why in today's world, and obviously we're, we know from working with other platforms that you've got to be careful how much time and money you invest in platforms because at the end of the day, they own the platform, mm-hmm. you don't. And a tweak of the algorithm can destroy a lot of your effort and work. But LinkedIn is built on the basis of having membership and these members having yeah. a, a profile. So whatever they tweak the algorithm, and they do constantly, 
they're not going to change your profile mm -hmm. because that is how they earn their money via the recruitment industry, etc. Giving people access to profiles and uh, people's in, uh, industry experience to be recruited. So you're always going to have that. Therefore, you've got to ask the question as, as an individual, and I'm not talking about business pages here, just as an individual, that is your website of your personal yeah. skills, abilities, history to the world. Yeah. Do you want to build another website and have another website to maintain on top of your business? I don't personally. Yeah. I don't quite, think many people do, yeah, to be honest. <laughs> I've got enough websites to look after. Therefore, I use LinkedIn as if someone wants to know about me, <clears throat> I send them to LinkedIn yeah. because it, it is there and I mm -hmm. do update it on a regular basis. Not every month, but probably every quarter I will do a profile mm -hmm. refresh. Yeah. For sure. And that's, and that's uh, the point that you made there, it's all about your personal profile, not your business page. So, and, and that's where you say you got a lot of the, the leads in the business from recently. Yep. And um, it's through your own personal one. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to bring up my profile because it, it acts as a, a way that we can talk through it in a structured manner. Mm -hmm. uh, because LinkedIn's quite a complex platform uh, and the way it's been designed is not particularly user, user friendly. And the mobile version is very different from yeah, the, yeah, no, the, and just something on that. If you're doing any work on your profile or doing articles or doing any work on LinkedIn, I strongly recommend you do it on a laptop or a desktop because the functionality is drastically removed on mobile. Mm -hmm. And just as simple as something is connecting with another individual on mobile is not as efficient as doing it on a desktop because it prompts you with a big connect button, mm -hmm. which makes people press it but it doesn't allow you to send a message. Yeah, and that's one thing is like, when you join on LinkedIn, don't just blatantly and just connect, connect. Don't, and don't just ping what's it, yeah. connect, connect. Mm -hmm. Now actually on mobile, there is a way you can send a message, mm -hmm. but it is, you need to know how to yeah. do it and it's yeah. not obvious. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I don't know if the stats, but I would say 90% of users don't know how to send a message to, to get a connection yeah. on mobile. So my advice would be if you're changing anything or deciding to do work, do the work on a laptop or a desktop. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do all my work on LinkedIn on a laptop and desktop, but I do all my chatting and messages by my mobile when I'm moving about. But any work I do on a desktop mm -hmm. because there's so much of the functionality removed on the, yeah, yeah. No, on the mobile. So just, if we start in a logical sequence, you're building into a database your profile. So it's your little tiny digital space on this massive database of, I don't even know how many members are on LinkedIn, hundreds of millions are around the world. And you get to have that space uh, and there's certain things on there where there's a description of what you do, the initial description. And this is important and most people get this wrong. The first thing they put in is their job title. So yeah. I'm managing director at yeah. XYZ agency or I'm vice president of, mm -hmm. or I'm tour guide. Most people do it. Do yeah. it. And, yeah. the, and the reason most people do it is because that's the way the platform encourages you to do it. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it from, and you're an expert in Google search and other ways of connecting with people, no one apart from recruiters on LinkedIn are searching for managing director or vice president of XYZ. Yeah, yeah. If they're searching on LinkedIn, they're looking for a solution to an issue they have. Therefore, what you should be mentioning on your profile is your solutions. Yeah to what your target customer base. It's like your keywords on a website. So it's your keywords, yeah, yeah. keywords on, yeah. on your website. But if you go through people's profiles, because of the way it's structured, you'll see them putting in their company name, the brand name, and all the rest of it. So if, if I'd use my own profile, my headline, and this is seen on mobile or desktop, but it's the bit, and it's also the bit the search engine mm -hmm. search, which is that first headline. Adventure travel specialist, that is my core job in yeah. life. Digital transformation, travel industry, speaker, advisor to travel industry startups, corporate events, incentive events, charity events, team building, unique expeditions. All of these things are things I do. Mm -hmm. It's not about me. Yep. So one of the psychological things here with LinkedIn is they give you a profile to build, which makes people instantly think it's about them. It's not. You're building a profile for your potential customers. Yep. Now, obviously, because you've got photograph on it and you've got your name on it, you have to mention a little bit about yourself but I would suggest a tiny amount about yourself yep. and much more about the issues you can fix mm -hmm. for your potential customers. Yep. And if you were doing this in any other marketing way or any other business plan, you would do it in a logical sequence. And LinkedIn gives you a logical sequence. They just prompt you to do it in a way that doesn't make, it makes sense if you were talking all about you. Yep. But from my experiences, having changed from 
having a profile years ago that was all about me and what jobs I did, what roles I did. I changed it to profile that talks all about the things we fix for our customers. My income and inquiries mm -hmm. have increased by a significant margin. That's just pure, purely by tweaking what's on the profile. Purely for tweaking profile, talking about <clears throat> the things I know my potential customers have issues with. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. the first bit is that, and you need to do this offline. When I say offline, I'm, again, because I'm old and great, I use pens and paper. Don't just go into your LinkedIn profile and start changing everything. Start with an A4 piece of paper and writing it out how you would do it. And this takes time because you, you'll do one version, two versions, three versions until you're absolutely mm -hmm. happy with, with yep. what you should do. But the first bit, because this is the bit everybody sees, your name and what issues do you fix yep. for your target minute, uh, industry. Underneath that, you get the summary. Now, because we all live on mobile, mobile with LinkedIn only shows you the first sentence of the summary. Therefore, <laughs> it's an incredibly important yep. sentence because the summary is, I, can't remember, I think it's 2,000 words you get in your summary, mm -hmm. top of my head. Yeah, I think that's about right. But LinkedIn on a mobile will only show you the first sentence. Even on a desktop, it only shows a first couple of sentences and then you've got to press a button yep. to drop it down. So without, and I know you know all this, this stuff, but they have got to be hooks to get your target audience to press that button yep. to actually see the rest of the summary because mm -hmm. you don't get them on them first sentences, they're off your profile in a way. And again, LinkedIn, for whatever reason, hasn't really made that clear mm -hmm. to people and, and it's incredibly important. So there's two things in the profile that I think is more important than anything else. It's the initial keywords be about what your customers are looking for and your initial introduction to what you do because yep. it's one sentence on phone and then a couple of sentences mm -hmm. on desktop before you write it down and the, the, the analogy of that is it's like when you're doing a google search you, know, you get your, your meta title at the top yep. your short description it's literally that is what you're putting together yes like it, it keyword is rich, it's, you know. and, and it's this stuff is simple but incredibly mm -hmm. hard you have to do version after version after version because it's so short and everybody wants to explain what they do in detail, yeah. you're trying to shorten it down to get the, the right impact with the shortest amount, yeah. of, shortest amount of words. So the sentence that shows up in my profile uh, on people to a mobile, which is the first sentence of my summary, I help ordinary people do extraordinary challenges, giving them experiences and, and stories to share for life. That's it. I don't get any more space. Mm -hmm. that, that's all they've yeah. given me uh, on that space. If that hooks anybody, and then it brings it in, on mobile, it still shows all your keywords. So there's a refreshing on all the keywords. Again, a refresh. No one's interested in you being a managing director or vice president, blah, blah, blah. No one is searching or for Or which that. school you've been to. Or which that. school I've <laughs> been for, exactly. Although that is at the bottom. So your initial summary goes in. That hook for whatever you're doing in your tour and activity business has to be the hook to do what I've just mm -hmm. done, which is expand the summary. And then the summary gives them an extra up to 2,000 words, I think, in total. Uh, but I'm not sure with that, and that would need checked. I believe the next bit under the summary is the one bit that you do talk about yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, because they've been interesting enough to click through. I think that next bit is where you give them confidence, uh, authority. Grab them, by the way, that this person who've hooked me in yeah, now they're emphasizing that they can deliver on these keywords that mm -hmm. they've said and that sentence I was interested in. So again, I'm using my own example. Um, my opening hook was, I help ordinary people do extraordinary challenges, giving them experiences, stories to share for life. If that gets someone to expand my profile, the next thing they see is, in excess of 160,000 people have experienced their services. Personally, I've traveled and operated in excess of 120 countries. So I'm in the travel business. I'm a tour operator, I'm a small tour operator. People who are looking to do business to business deals with me, I've clicked through, mm -hmm. I'm giving them reassurance straight away yep. that I've been around for a long time and we've delivered X amount yep. of experience for people around the globe uh, in, safe, in a safe way. I then believe you, you want to make it very clear who you work with and who you want to do business with because you LinkedIn like all social platforms, is once you start becoming successful on them, you have to wade through a lot of noise. And if you're successful on LinkedIn, like any other platform, a lot of noise comes in as well. Yep. Uh, and that takes, and that's time. 
to sift through, sift through it. So you want to cut down that noise as much as possible. So I believe you make it very clear who you want to work with. Uh, and then hopefully that will stop some of the noise coming in. Yeah. So my, this is still in the summary. Straight away, I move on to who my clients are. Mm -hmm. uh, my clients include corporate companies, charities, tour companies, schools, families, the military, youth groups, and individuals. Uh, so it makes it clear who, what my businesses operate with, who our target market is. And after talking about who the clients are, what do we do for them? We provide unique challenging expeditions, activity days, short breaks, incentive tours, corporate events in Scotland and globally. So we've led in with keywords, we've led in with a hook of an introduction yep. of can to get people interested in what you're doing. And if they've found you by the keywords, you would hope that hook is good yeah. enough to convert them. You've then expanded the summary. If they've took the hook on the, on the, the introduction, you've given them reassurance and authority of what you're doing. Then you've made it very clear straight from the beginning who you work with and what you do for them. That is as much as most people read. Mm -hmm. and, and to be honest, there's tools you can, you can get that will tell you how much your profile yeah. people have read and how much they've not. Most people just read the, the keywords and in your initial sentence, mm -hmm. and then you get a percentage that will read the summary. How many people read the whole profile? Very few. But the important bit is the people who do read the whole profile are on their way to contacting exactly. you. So obviously you've you kept them interested to keep reading on and stuff like yeah. that. So. I've just, uh, as we're in Glasgow, uh, <laughs> we're having some of the national drink of Scotland as we're sitting here in Glasgow City Centre, having some iron <laughs> brew. Some iron brew. Just all that, actually, iron brew is, uh, Glasgow is the, or Scotland, I should say, um, is the only country in the world, I believe, where iron brew is the number one soft drink. Everywhere else, it's Coca-Cola, so there we go. Yeah. We like to do things different here. And the second most sold country in is Russia. Russia. Moscow yeah. being the, yeah. the main city for it. <laughs> so, obviously... Having your, your profile optimised is key to helping you, you know, get people interested in you initially, you know, hopefully driving some leads through that as well. But that actually isn't going to be the only thing it does. Make sure you have to keep posting on that, keep it up to date. You know, what's the sort of process you've went through to yep. generate leads that you were, you were mentioning in the bookings? So, and I'll just, before we go into how we've been generating leads, mm -hmm. I'll stick on the profile. You've got that summary. What I've then expanded in my profile is I've broke down each of my clients on the expanded summary. So I mentioned who my clients were, mm -hmm. but then I've given them a paragraph each. Excellent, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> you're a, a fine one in well, corporate events, corporate mm -hmm. incentive, team building events, school and youth events. So these are our event business when we work with groups. Organising the best event that is different is a challenge. So I'm emphasising what their challenge is, not mm -hmm. what my challenge is. Yep. I'm thinking it from their perspective. Yep. They're looking to organise a new corporate event. They've done 50 before. They're looking for something different. So I understand they have a challenge and I'm making sure they understand I understand. We listen to what you want to achieve and then we design, design bespoke events that inspire, amuse and develop. We have delivered events for teams from four to 500 people. Now each of my target groups, be it the military, be it charities, each of them deserve their own paragraph, mm -hmm. I believe. Yeah. And you've got to mind, this is my belief. Not, yeah. Yeah. This is not fact, this is my belief and it's working for us, that if you give your target customer, you're basically taking what you know their pain point is, or some of their pain points, and then answering their question. And this is, sorry, marketing one-on-one. -on -one. Mm. All you're doing is taking it onto your, your yeah. LinkedIn profile. Yeah. So that way you built up your, from the beginning, a whole thing, and I come back to this, upwards of 90% of my profile is not about me. It is about <laughs> the clients. And I would say, if we're looking for time zone here, how much time did I spend on my profile? When I started taking this seriously, I've probably spent upwards of four days work on my profile over a period of years. Yeah, yeah. But if I take the refreshes, when I've changed target markets, when I've ch been doing something else, targeting a different industry mm -hmm. or whatever, you have to change your, yeah, your profile yeah. respect to, to do that. And it takes time, it certainly takes me time because I'm not the sharpest tool in the box. To write, this, that, that. <laughs> to write this stuff down, then put it on, then measure it. Yeah. So I believe the profile is fundamental before you do any of the stuff we're about to yeah. talk about. Because I think doing stuff on LinkedIn is a waste of time unless your landing page, which is your profile, yeah. is going to yeah. respect the work that you're mm -hmm. going. And I see time and time again, a lot of people putting a lot of effort in on their content creation, but it's not matched by mm -hmm. their 
the yeah. profile on their contact. Yeah, had anyone heard it? Is that like marketing? It's like we, we, we won't take clients forward if, if we're bringing them on board to do any marketing without optimizing their web pages, you know, yeah. doing the research first and actually getting that side. Because you need the foundation yeah. right before you, before you start throwing your money down a drain if you, if you don't do that side of things. So, yeah. um, so I completely agree. So, um, so getting around to generating business mm -hmm. on LinkedIn and like also uh, social platforms, effort in, reward out. And it's no different from any other one. The more effort you put in, the more reward you get. Yeah. Get out, and if you stop doing effort, if you've got a profile that's been amassed, you will still get a drip feed in for sure, and that gives you reporting tools that shows you how many visitors to your profile and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. Uh, but I've AB split tested this, spent time on it, come off for a week, spent time on it, and it is, it's not a cliff face. It's not like Facebook advertising mm -hmm. when you stop doing it, it is yeah. a cliff drop. LinkedIn isn't a, a drop like that, it's more a, a drop like that. And then when you start putting input in again, it's more a gradual yeah. climb out. So it's even rather than mm -hmm. cliff face it, drop it. So you, you, there's ways of engagement on that drives potential contacts and business and opportunities to you on it. The first one, I believe people should to build confidence and to build uh, knowledge of doing it, is don't create content. And that sounds harsh about face, but watch what other people are doing in your sector mm -hmm. and learn from other people. Yeah. And also watch what other people are doing in other sectors. And anything that inspires you to read their content and you think it's good, will take, yeah. Note, yeah. Take, take note of that for yeah. obvious reasons. So there's a learning profile time to go through and how much you want to spend on that. It's up to yourself. I consume content and I consume reading. So I consume quite a lot of people's content and I learn, I learn from it. The next stage after doing all that reading and learning and who's good is engage with the content that you're enjoying. Mm -hmm. Because people have went a lot of time and effort to create it. You've got value out it because you've read. Yep. Why don't you tell them that you've got value at it by commenting? And this is another bugbear that I see in LinkedIn. If I see another person saying, well done, great article, excellent work. It's just, if you're going to comment, put some effort into it. It's a good point, it's a good point. <laughs> Don't just, it's better, in my opinion again, and this is only my opinion, it's better not to comment than actually just say, great work. Yeah, yeah. At least if you've enjoyed the content, or you've more often than not learned something from the content, comment on it. Mm -hmm. Learn, like, what did you learn? I enjoyed that because I learned X, Y, Z. Have you thought about this if mm -hmm. you want to engage in a, a, a two-way thing? But it's certainly a way and it's the same as all social platforms, likes, likes, and shares, and all the rest of it. In my world, I'm normally liking somebody's comment, and sometimes I won't comment because it was it was a quick piece of content consumed. And it was like, oh, it was <laughs> but if I was really engaged, I will definitely like yeah. and comment and give a comment. I'm not an expert by any means on LinkedIn's algorithm. They change it like all the rest of them. Yeah. But I believe, and there's people on there that who are experts, so you can find the algorithm <laughs> experts from LinkedIn that will tell you how it works. But I believe comments are much more, likes are valuable, comments are more valuable, shares you would think are really valuable, but I don't believe they are. Yeah. I think comments are more valuable yeah. than shares, but there's, there's people better. Which makes sense, now. if you're engaging more with the yeah. content that's there, then you're, yeah. there's people that makes like, sense to me. You can look up who <clears throat> understands the algorithm mm -hmm. uh, more. So that, that's a kind of tiered thing from a liking to engage from a learning thing, first of all, who's doing good content, who's doing bad content, to engaging with it from a like and a, and a comment perspective. Yeah. But at some point, if you're going to treat it seriously, you're going to have to move on to creating content. And you're in the creating content business and helping people not, you know that can be quite a, a challenging mm -hmm. thing for at the end of the day, we're talking about tour operators here and experience providers. Yeah. I believe the content that you create for LinkedIn has to be very different from the content that you're putting out on your other platforms because the audience is a very different mm -hmm. audience. And who are you targeting on LinkedIn? they're different targets from who you're probably uh, targeting on other social platforms. And that's quite easy to say, but it gets more complex in the fact that a lot of the people on LinkedIn, obviously they're, they're under a brand of a business or whoever they work from, but they're still B2C customers. Yeah. But your language and your content has to be at a B2B level for engagement rather than the B2C level for engagement. Mm -hmm. So I certainly never post anything on LinkedIn that's going to on Facebook or vice versa or Twitter. Mm -hmm. And we don't do the, the shares between yeah. them all. It's specific content created for LinkedIn. 
The one you actually, could, that should be for any platform, to be honest. Your content should be specific for the platform. I, the, the I believe it probably is. Yeah. I think it's more pronounced for LinkedIn mm -hmm. because it is such a business-focused, I deem to say more professional uh, platform. People treat it more professional. I'm not saying it is more professional. People treat it more professional yeah. Yeah. because they feel they're in their workspace. Yeah. And, and you've got to remember, the vast majority of people on LinkedIn are in jobs. They're in jobs and they have employers yeah. who employ them. Therefore, they're not saying, engaging, commenting on LinkedIn as how they would on, on Facebook, uh, for, for sure. So if you get to creating content, there are different types of content you can create. A post. Post is very straightforward. It's a short piece of content, and there's a maximum amount of characters, which I can't remember what there is. And there's a room to put in a photograph, or there's a room to put in a, mm -hmm. a video. Yeah. I suggest a photograph or a video at all times, and with a small about content, a that can link out to emphasize the content. If you're pulling in an article from someone else's site, certainly link out to them and discuss the point yep. on that content. A simple post. Posts on the algorithm are, Facebook's changed over the years from being very unlike Facebook to becoming more like Facebook from how the interface works. So the posts and the regular feed, your news feed on your LinkedIn profile is the posts mm -hmm. that are generally yeah. Been shared. And the post is where most engagement are on LinkedIn at the moment. Years ago, it was in groups. Now it's most of the yeah. engagements on posts. If people start liking your posts and engaging with your posts, another bug may remain, engage back. <laughs> don't just let them... Okay, obviously, you don't have to do it on every single one. But if people are in, taking the time to read, consume, and then engage, yeah. have, don't have, ignore the, it. have the courtesy to go back and engage with them as well. And yeah. it can be very short, it is a post. But all of that, and all of this is the network effect, where's this all going to? All of this is helping build your profile because every time you're engaging, every time you're liking, that is being shown to their connections as well as your connections. Exactly. And just to get back to the fundamentals, LinkedIn is built on a, a connection pyramid of, I'm connected to you, mm -hmm. so we're first connections. People you're connected to, but I'm not, will be second connections, yep. and then third connections that I never ever get to, I just focus on my first mm -hmm. and my second are there. So you're in a pyramid effect mm -hmm. of connections, therefore you're building your profile and you're building your engagement to expand that profile of connections. Mm -hmm. And it comes back to the old reach, more eyeballs, see what it does, yep. more yep. people comment, hence your profile gets bigger, and then more inquiries or more mm -hmm. conversation should a, a state from LinkedIn happen on the, the amount of them connections yeah. that you're doing. So posts, I believe, are incredibly important. How many should you be doing once your profile's created and you've got some traction? I don't know, but I certainly do several per week. Sometimes mm -hmm. if I'm uh, focusing on it, I'll maybe do five a week, other times two or, two or three a week, but it's a drip feed. Yeah. Uh, and for people who are advanced on this stuff, you can schedule it and you can put it on schedulers. So if you've got a quiet day and you do all your LinkedIn posts for a month, put it on a schedule and it, it can be fed in. That's posts. From posts, you go into articles. Articles are a much more in-depth. Mm. I use I use them quite a lot. Story. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, weirdly, again, because of the algorithm, articles normally get seen by a lot less people than posts, which I can't quite get my head around yeah. because you have to put a lot more effort no. into an no, article make sense. than you do a post. Yeah. You know, the people on LinkedIn must be very clever people. You would think they understand. <laughs> That for us to write an article takes a lot more time and effort than writing a post. Therefore, you think they would reward the article over the post. They don't. The post in the algorithm is rated higher than the article. So the way I think about it when I'm producing articles is it's targeted at a very... It's not targeted at the people I'm connected to all in my market mm -hmm. on there. It's kind of targeted at a very subset of my connections. Yes and something that I'm really interested in at that time because I know it's going to be seen by a much, much restricted amount of people. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the more niched I've made it and the more targeted I've made it, weirdly, the more impact yeah. it, it has just because of the, you have to work with these things when you understand mm -hmm. how, the, how the platform I normally do a post as well that links to that article yes. anyway, within LinkedIn and not off somewhere else and some other sites. So no, for it. sure. You, the more you network <laughs> yeah. that out and bring it in, the yeah. more uh, I will do... Uh, posts on Facebook driving people to LinkedIn from Facebook groups, driving them to LinkedIn for yeah, articles. Yeah. Uh, and just from some testing, I can drive more 
article reads from Facebook than I can from within mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Mm -hmm often by the same people. It's, it's actually a good point because if you're running a, a Facebook group, for example, um, and you, you use that for a lot of content, which I do through the Digital Tourism Show, obviously, if you then link that to LinkedIn, if they end up becoming a connection through that, unlike Facebook, you then get their contact details, including their email and all that within LinkedIn, which you don't get on a Facebook group. So you can sort of gather more information, more data that way. No, for sure. They are two tools that mm -hmm. I firmly believe people should be operating in tandem, not mm -hmm. putting the same stuff on both. Uh, but once you learn a bit about it, you definitely want to use them yep. in tandem because at the end of the day, if you're, you're building up knowledge and information about an individual or a business or whatever, you use whatever's there. And to me, that mm -hmm. they, they operate in tandem completely. So the articles, I believe, are incredibly important because they're demonstrating your knowledge base about whatever mm -hmm. product or industry or service that you're doing. And you're building up an engaged following who are not just connected to you, but actually reading what you produce and hopefully commenting on what you produce. And over a period of time, you're building up an authority mm -hmm. in that. So we went through posts, we went through articles. The, the, the other bit I think is critically important in today's world, it wasn't so important in six years ago, seven, eight years ago, is you need media on LinkedIn as, as well now, which you're an expert mm -hmm. in producing videos and uh, stuff like that. So at the bottom of your profile, going back to profiles, after all of that stuff, about your customers and about your target uh, clients, you need some authority media down there. Is that slide shares? Is that presentations you've done? Is it videos? Mm -hmm. Is it articles that's been written about your business? Yep. It is whatever it is that gives your business and you authority in your sector. Not many people are using the media yep. section of LinkedIn yet. Uh, mm -hmm. A few are, a few are doing ex exceptional well, but not many people are using it. In a lot of cases, there's no real excuse because if you're a tour company, experience company, attraction company, I can guarantee you, you've got pretty good media somewhere. You've got video, you've got outstanding <laughs> photographs, you've got great media, and there's probably a shitload of articles being written about you yeah. somewhere. So what's missing is you've just not went and got it and put it on LinkedIn. Yeah. So you, you want to create a media bank at the bottom of your LinkedIn that I would suggest should be refreshed fairly often. It doesn't need to be refreshed mm -hmm. weekly. Again, maybe every quarter, mm -hmm. add it on. Or if you've done an interview somewhere or you've had some press coverage that's happening about your business, because this is adding authority to all that work you've done producing the posts yep. and the content and building it up. So that sounds like a lot of work. And it is. <laughs> it is. Again, this is a journey. You're not in it for a, a quick hit. To do this, and I would recommend any tour activity provider to do this, do not do it unless you understand you're in for the long game and you're going to be doing this week in, month out, mm -hmm. year in, year out, because it's a journey. It's not got an end date. It's just going to keep going. But what happens is when you build this and it builds, and your profile builds, your connections build on mm -hmm. the back of that. And then where do the leads come from? Because you've demonstrated all this, people start engaging with you via private message. The Messenger yeah. app on a, which is terrible by the way. No, oh, yeah. The yeah. Messenger app yeah. on LinkedIn is terrible, but it is what it is. So you will get people open conversations on then. On average, I will do five to six phone calls per week from LinkedIn that people have approached me on LinkedIn. The chat goes back and forward and then very quickly it's either dies mm -hmm. uh, to be taken up at another time, or it's very relevant that we should move to an off LinkedIn yep. conversation very quickly. Yep. In fact, after this video, I have got one with your home country in Portugal. <laughs> I'm speaking to a tour operator in Portugal straight after this, nice, which, nice. which came from LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're, you're going through a process of creating these incoming connections that some will connect to conversations. You want to get that conversation off of LinkedIn at that point because that's going to give you the one-to-one -one communication yeah. Yeah. and you know how it works from then on. It's the same as we all do. We've had phone calls, we've had online communication. At some point we meet offline mm -hmm. and people do business with people that they like and respect. What LinkedIn has got you when you get to that point, which is different from meeting someone at a network event or meeting someone at a trade event or meeting someone in general business, is they've been reading, following and watching what you've been doing yep. before they contact you. So they're already exceedingly warm mm -hmm. to what you're doing. 
Now, don't get me wrong, you're going to get contact with people trying to sell you stuff as well, but we're all buyers as well mm -hmm. as sellers. Mm -hmm. So you're going to get people trying to sell you I, stuff. I, yeah, I was going to say, that's one of my bugbearers with LinkedIn, and, and don't, please don't do this, but it's, uh, the amount of people who I've had connect in with me, yep. um, either just a connection straight away, or they maybe add a little note, um, but it's quite irrelevant what they write. And then as soon as you accept that connection, the first private message you get is, oh, we can build your websites and give you SEO services and this and that, or whatever it is, the service you're in, and you're just going, that's not how you, you I, don't, I don't know you, why would I buy from you? Like you had to build up that trust that, first. So that is an example for all the touring operators, touring activity operators out there. Don't do that. Yeah. That, that is the worst <laughs> possible thing you do. Don't connect with somebody and try to sell. And you see constant posts on uh, LinkedIn, people mm. complaining about this. I kind of take a different view. All that tells me is there's a lot of people on there that have not been educated about how to do social yeah. correctly. Yeah. I also, because we're in the travel business, a lot of my connections come from a lot of developing countries as well as developed countries. And these guys and girls in the developing countries think this is the way to do it. I've now got a connection because you've accepted a mm. connection. They buy yeah. you with a... Yeah. And, and there is an education <laughs> part to go through with this. And I actually think some of the platforms like LinkedIn should be doing a better job of... Can, if you're signing up with LinkedIn, here is how you yeah. X, Y, and we can argue about how you use it. But I, I do believe there's a responsibility for the platforms to try and help their users use them in the correct way. And that is certainly not the correct mm -hmm. way. But my main point on it is I've my experience is the leads that are generating because of the work I've done through that profile building, content building, constant engagement, they're very, very warm leads. And this is without doing any LinkedIn advertising or nothing, it's purely no content? Because I, I test everything. I've tested LinkedIn advertising. It's pretty crap. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. it's not a patch on Facebook. Yeah. It just doesn't seem... And I don't know why, because mm -hmm. it's getting the engagement, it's getting the reach, it's getting in front of the, the way you program mm -hmm. it to get in front of people. I just don't think people on the platform... Yeah, It's like, what you said earlier on, that people treat LinkedIn differently. I, so yeah. I, I personally don't think ads work that well no, on LinkedIn. Someone will crack it, I'm sure. No, yeah. Some of that will happen. But At the moment, um, it's, yeah. my testing on it has failed mm -hmm. on paid ads. Yeah. And actually, on that, just, just recently, they've redesigned the whole interface to look very, very much like Facebook's advertising platform. Yeah. But, and yeah. I can see from their point of view why they would want yeah, to be, yeah. because it's a massive revenue generator for them. But my experience is, and uh, to be honest, I've tested maybe five or six times. It's not extensively like I did with, have done with Facebook. I just can't make it work there mm -hmm. for I don't do yeah. it. I'd rather spend time, which is money, creating mm -hmm. better content, creating better engagement yeah. with the content, yeah. going through my connections and working with them again rather than paying yeah. ads to go, to go through it. But my point is that what comes in when you do this is incredibly warm uh, and in some ways warmer. And, you know, we do, we do mm -hmm. stuff on Facebook not in some ways, a lot warmer than the Facebook. Like our conversion rate on Facebook is, we do well on Facebook, but the conversion rate is relatively small mm -hmm. compared with some other routes because it's so easy to inspire people on Facebook. It's yeah. so easy to yeah. get an inquiry on Facebook. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. Therefore, your conversion rate isn't that high. Whereas you have to work harder on LinkedIn, but they're really well. But the, the, leads, the leads more yeah. quality. Yeah. And coming back to why this is important for tour operators, Remember who you're targeting, probably on LinkedIn. You're targeting B2B partners. Mm -hmm. So it's not a one-off customer who's going to do business the way he wants. It's normally a B2B partner. So in my case, it's a lot of the time it's incentive companies, uh, destination management companies who are working in... corporate events and stuff, that makes Who sense, are working yeah. in areas yeah. who... They are, now, they may only do one or two pieces of business with us each year, but that's one or two pieces of business... <laughs> for years and years mm -hmm. and years, compared with a customer, normal customer of Facebook will do business with us once, mm -hmm. maximum twice in their life. So the value of the potential leads for touring activity companies on Facebook, I believe, is much mm -hmm. higher. Yeah. Uh, and you get the direct business where it's just one-off one -off events and individuals mm -hmm. as, as well as a tactic I tested in Glasgow, actually, and Edinburgh several years ago. Uh, I was connecting people not just within my, our industry, but people in different companies who I was mm -hmm. connected to, second degree connections, but they would be in all sorts of different businesses around Glasgow. Uh, but I was doing networking in Glasgow at the time, I was putting a bit of effort into building up our Glasgow profile mm -hmm. because we'd invested some money in Glasgow. A thing We've got a good profile in Edinburgh because that's where a lot of our business comes from. So I thought I'd put some effort into Glasgow. So I connected with a lot of new connections in Glasgow who were connected to other people. Got in a conversation with them. They all instantly got a free experience with us and they're 
give me a free experience. A lot of them didn't use it. A lot of them did use it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it certainly put me in their mind frame because no one gives much away for free yeah. on the, the Glasgow thing. Off these free experience, it was to an individual. So I'm only giving away 40, 50 quid's worth mm -hmm. of yeah. experience. But I can't remember the number of corporate functions we got on the back of that, but it was significant. And each corporate function is worth X thousands. But so whatever we gave away, we got back yeah. from individual bigger events, events for 20 people, events for 100 people came back mm -hmm. on the back of that. Not in a week when in the month, we did it for about two months doing this. It didn't all come back then, but over a period yeah. of 12 months, because of that, we generated, and that to us was completely new business because Glasgow had not been a good market for us. We hadn't sure. put any effort in Glasgow really. So we got a lot of these Glasgow companies doing events with us on the back of LinkedIn just by going through what I've spoken to here. The other thing for tour and operators, now that's jogged my memory, it's very tempting in LinkedIn to go global straight away. And depending on what you provide, that may be, if all your customers yep. are inbound from other countries, you have to go global. Uh, but I focused local first when I was building. So it was Scotland first and more targeted than that. It was city yep. or region in Scotland targeted to build my profile and connections in that city, then the next city, then there. And then I went out to different destinations mm -hmm. in different uh, countries. Could be completely different for different businesses, but it comes back to the business really understanding who their customer is, where their customer's coming from geography wise. Mm -hmm. Because LinkedIn lets you build by geography. Yeah. Uh, I should have mentioned that at the beginning because that's incredibly mm -hmm. powerful. You may be a, an operator who only takes your business in a small geography. Now, what's the real value of building a profile targeting yeah. another 15 countries? Yeah. You'll be maybe an, out, an inbound operator that only takes international business. I would hope you would know who your number one country is, your number two country, your number three country. Therefore, your strategy would be to build B2B connections yeah. in your target countries who are providing you the most business, or you decide you want to build up an up and coming country. So we decide China's everywhere in the, the market news at the moment, the amount of customers coming out of China, you're looking to build up your Chinese business. It's not going to be an instant hit. It's going to be a long process. Let's build up your network yeah. of tour <coughs> operators and potential business to business partners in uh, China. But that geography search function is probably one of the most powerful Functions. That is, uh, the search function is incredible, actually, the amount of filters you can use to find that information. Yeah. In terms of your profile, do you think um, having a premium account, which gives you the sort of in-mail sort of functionality, do you think that's important to have? Or do you think that little badge next to you saying you're a, a premium two, member? Two thoughts on this. Uh, if you watch this video and you decide to do something about LinkedIn, I would say, and you're not a premium member, I'd say don't buy it. Because mm -hmm. uh, it's quite expensive. I don't know what it is, but thousand bucks a year or whatever mm -hmm. it is. Uh, I do think it's got value, but I think it's only got value once you're a heavy user. Yep. Uh, to build up to be a heavy user, I think you should do all the work, all the content producing, building your profile, all of these things. Mm -hmm. A premium member doesn't get any more tools to do it than a free member. Yep. So you can do everything I've been talking about as a free member. Mm -hmm. The premium member, particularly if you use Sales Navigator, with it comes with a lot more search functions mm -hmm. and a lot more basically CRM tools to help you target individuals. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say that for tour and activity operators, being a premium member is not, it's not critical. It's mm -hmm. not even slightly critical. Yeah. I would say you can do everything you want to do mm -hmm. without it. If you become a really, really heavy user, I find the sales navigator tools and being a, mm -hmm. I don't know if the badge brings you any more credibility. I don't think it does. Mm -hmm. I think it's because there's so many people yeah. on LinkedIn that have not got it. I don't think it brings anything. Yeah. But I personally like some of the, the extra search mm -hmm. functionality. Well, that's, what, that's what I use it for. But uh, I have to say the, the in-mail sort of functionality, and for those who don't know what in-mail mm -hmm. is, it's, it allows you to connect with your third connections that you're not really allowed to connect with. Um, send them an email. But I have to say I've, I've found it pretty poor in terms of uh, I'm not a heavy user. I'm not a heavy user of in-mail. Mm -hmm. uh, if I want to, I have used it, and again, I found it's not great. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see in-mails coming to me, and they tend to be the last one I read. To be honest, I read the ones from my connections <laughs> before I read yep. in-mails coming. 
I find it's easier if I want to get to someone who's outside my network, the first level, and it's easy to go to who you see is connected with them. And if I've only got two, and it's maybe a bit and I don't really know them, but if I'm connected with some of them, I've got 500 joint connections, there's a chance mm -hmm. I can get to that person via an, an introduction. Could That's what I was going to say to me. That's the more yeah. beneficial and, way of doing it. Asking for the connection. And, asking for the connection yes. rather than the end mail. Yeah. I, I, other people may have other experience and have mm -hmm. great joy with end mail, but I've been a pretty weak user mm -hmm. of it because when I have used it, the response has been mm -hmm. yeah. pretty poor compared with the response of going through someone. To, yeah. to get to someone. Yeah. No, I'd rather ask the person who I'm connected to in the sort of second level. Or the fact that what I, would, what I would do is in the first level, be introduced to someone in the second level, and then they be introduced to someone in the third. That way you're building up that sort of connection between the. And even just going direct to the connection, you, I know you can't get to them in the mm -hmm. third, but if you go direct to the second level with a direct message mm -hmm. uh, saying, we're connected to so and so together, you know, yep. uh, the, and relevant point to why you mm -hmm. want to connect, and that's a good enough reason. Most people, mm -hmm. I think, or feel do connect if you give them reason exactly. to connect. Or if you've read an article from them, or like we're saying, you say, I loved your article, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Or if there's value, value connect. if it just so, yeah. looks like spam, or if it just mm -hmm. looks like the press and don't do anything, yeah, don't be surprised when you don't mm -hmm. get any, I keep coming back to it, effort in, return yeah. out. If there's no effort going in, you're not going to get the yeah. return out of it. But for touring activity operators, I would not run out and buy premium LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I would say it's suitable for a small amount once they're quite advanced at using mm -hmm. it. And it may take you a year or longer to become, get back to the beginning. I've been using this thing since 2003, uh, and I'm, I'm a slow learner, so it took me a long time to learn how to use this. Uh, and I'm already really, I would class a heavy user the last few years, whereas I, yeah. I would say I was a medium, and certainly for a big period, I was in the norm, put a profile up, forget it, and then maybe a medium user, and now I would, I'd say I'm a heavy mm -hmm. user. Mm -hmm. So we're sort of, uh, in terms of business from it, and I'm not asking, yeah. unless you want to put figures into it, but what sort of, what sort of revenue do you think you've generated? Is it sort of tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands within no, LinkedIn? Six purely figures, by the six, six figures. figures. Yeah, we've, we've filled expeditions just from LinkedIn okay. with, with no paid marketing. Uh, and coming back to content again, normal, normal rules apply. I'm trying to think if I've created any content in the last two years, it's about what we do. I don't think I have. Mm -hmm. Maybe one. The content is about things my customer base or potential customer base are interested in, yeah. uh, not about what we do. I put very little content about what we, we do. Uh, and one of the annoying things that annoys me on LinkedIn is on my feed, most of my feed is from companies and people in these companies talking about themselves and talking about their company because they've been this awards or that awards. Mm -hmm. and this went, no one's really interested. Yeah. People are interested in what you can do for them. Mm -hmm. Therefore, you, you, all the time you're creating that content, what can I do for the people that are going to be reading this? Because they don't really care about you and they don't really care about your company. But most of my timeline is, is full of that sort of posts. So it, call it a 90-10 rule or an 80-20. 80-90% 80, 20, 80, 20, of your content is useful for your client and maybe slip in mm -hmm. a little bit of what you do. But to get back to your point, we've filled expeditions. I have gone with, here's content about what we are doing, filled an expedition. Again, that's a lot of revenue. Uh, I do consultancy work for startups and people in the travel industry. Average week, five to six conversations incoming. Can you help with this? Can you help with that? Most of them I say no because I don't believe in their, their yeah, pitch, yeah. the product. I've, I've been proved wrong several times. <laughs> <laughs> They're very successful companies. <laughs> but on the whole, uh, there's just not a good enough connection for yeah. us to go uh, speaking gigs. Uh, Constantly, mm -hmm. uh, I'm about to disappear to the Western Sahara war zone uh, to do a speaking gig that came through LinkedIn. Uh, another one in the US next year, LinkedIn. So that it, we do significant business mm -hmm. from LinkedIn, which more than justifies the creation mm -hmm. of the content. But I come back to this effort in a reward out. The minute you stop doing it, the minute you stop creating content, the minute you stop engaging, it does drop off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it gives you the tools to show you it's dropping off. And there's, there's a graph in there, I can't mind what it is, the amount of people are mm -hmm. looking at your profile and yep. all the rest of it. And it's updated every 24 hours. You know when you're not putting the effort in because they're telling you when you're not putting the effort in. And for sure, my inbox has less opportunities when I'm not putting the effort in. And when I'm putting the effort in, my inbox has, has more opportunities. It's incredible. Mm -hmm.
incredible. So that, that, that there you have it. Having a making six figures from uh, from LinkedIn with no advertising, your only spend is really your time. Yeah, in the day. it's time. But I do emphasise this time. If you're starting from scratch or a basic profile, you're not going to get a reward in two to three months. <clears throat> this takes a lot of thought, a lot mm -hmm. of effort, because it's very, very personal yep. to you and what you do and who you're doing it for. And you really need to understand all of these bits, especially who you mm -hmm. do it for, the clients. You really, really need to understand your customer profile, who these customers are, what are you doing for them, and word it in a way that that is understood, yep. and then go on the content creating path that takes time, months of building up your authority and your reputation mm -hmm. in there. So it's, it's definitely not something that you can put a bit of effort in and think I'm going to get rewards out of it in a short period of time. Yep. It's, unless you're a genius, it's just not going to happen. This is a long-term process that you sometimes fit. It, how you fit it in your day. I do 20 minutes in the morning, every morning. Mm -hmm. One of the first things I do yep. after cleaning up after my seven dogs is, <laughs> seven dogs. <laughs> is uh, sit on LinkedIn, answer my messages, and decide I've got a scheduler, so some con is sh content is scheduled mm -hmm. to go on. But I have a quick lead off my uh, news feed to see mm -hmm. if there's anything interesting on there. And by the way, we haven't talked about that, but you can uh, make sure you're seeing the things you want to see on your news feed. And uh, re make sure you're not seeing things you don't want to see. And again, most people don't realize that. You can train your news feed to show yeah. you what you want yeah. to do. But again, it takes effort to make sure you're clicking on I want to see this, I want to follow them, so it's mm -hmm. in my news feed. I don't want to see this. And if you start to have a big network of people, it's possible to, if someone who you still want to be connected with on a first level, but is producing a lot of content that you don't want to see, it's, it's simple enough to stop seeing their content yeah. With, yeah. without removing them as a, yeah. as a contact. Yeah. Yeah. So over the years, I've trained my news feed to show me the content that I want, mm -hmm. to, want to see. Yeah. Uh, so you can resp and that's where you get your engagement levels because you want to see stuff that's interesting to you so you can go on there and engage and think back to the rule you're, you're trying to engage with people more than you producing content all mm -hmm. the time yeah. and then you're dripping feed into it but is it something two and activity operators should use if they're small one man two man bands over Facebook I would always put face I would put what you do Google search number one mm -hmm. I would put Facebook slash Instagram number two. I would have this probably number three about Twitter. But again, it depends on the customer base. Are they 100% B2C? If they are, probably don't go near LinkedIn. If they're working with a lot of partnerships, B2B relationships, the industry, yeah, yeah I would say it has to be in that mix and treated, yeah. treated seriously. But again, at, at each individual tour and activity operator will be different. Uh, but how they do it. But I, to kind of summarise up, it's not being used well by our industry at the moment. When you look at the people in our industry who are using it well are the media outlets in our industry, yep. uh, some of the agencies in our industry. So some of the surrounding services of the tours and activity industry are using LinkedIn very well. But actual operators, the people who do the doing, yep are not using it particularly well. So I would think there's a huge opportunity for the operators to get on there and, mm -hmm. and capture some business yeah. from, from LinkedIn. No, I agree, I agree. I think LinkedIn is vastly underutilized in many industries, to be honest, but I think especially yeah. in tourism and tourism activity, it certainly is. And uh, just on the back of that, I think I need to go and have a look at my own profile and just double check. I've got everything you mentioned <laughs> in place. Because I'm thinking about that. I remember doing that. How long ago was it I updated that? So I need to have a look. <laughs> and that, and that's, I would say that's just normal. I did yeah. it for decades. Ken. It's just you put stuff on there and you forget about it and you just don't update anything. Yeah. And life's moved on. There's people with profiles that are in jobs that they've not been in for, for years ago. <laughs> yeah. And so at the end of the day, it's just a digital piece of data out there that is pointless unless it is yeah. it is updated. And even just updating your profile, I don't think is relevant unless you're actually doing uh, yeah. uh, you're do this something is it. This is yeah. something that people, we, I'm not sitting here saying, go and do this, this is the great thing for tourism activities. I'm not saying that at all. Mm -hmm. I'm saying this is something you need to think about because it is a revenue generator yeah. if you apply it in the right way. Mm -hmm. But if you're a two-man band and you're already incredibly busy and you've got all of this going on, is this one another one of these things that people come along with? Yes, it, yes, it is. That's the game you're in now. Mm -hmm. And you have to prioritise your time. 
So it may be that you can do all of this, and that's mm -hmm. a decision you have to make. Yep. But I believe operators should understand all their options to how to drive drive business. Yep. And just use whatever platform is going to be more suitable. Or it's going to drive, well, not more suitable, but they the think it's going to drive the most bookings and, and leads and things like that. This is bad for you, yep. business, but you just know this better than I do. Mm -hmm. What's the thing operators keep whinging about? It's particularly small business. We cannot afford. I can't afford that. I can't pay for that. I can't do mm -hmm. that. I'm a small operator. I haven't got the market and budget. That is the constant yep. statement from small operators. Well, this isn't a market and budget. This is time. And I know time's money, but this is time. Mm -hmm. This is a free return mm -hmm. for time. Yep. Therefore, if you're in the right, if you do take B2B, I think LinkedIn mm -hmm. is a place for, for small mm -hmm. operators who don't have market and budget mm -hmm. if they're going to spend time. Yeah. Yep. On it. It's just, just what you said, that's it's a bit of education for operators as well. It's, it's people, operators, what I've found from experiences, they don't want to, they want instant sales, they want sales done as quickly as possible yep. to generate the revenue, and I get that. No, they're putting money in, they want to see that return back. And the only way you're going to get that is by spending money on you know, Facebook ads, Google yep. ads, whatever that would be. But the organic stuff, just like SEO, if you're going to spend lots of time you know, putting out content, you know, managing your, 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 doing comments on social media and things like that, whether it's LinkedIn or Facebook, Spending time on that, it could take six months, it could take 12 months. Yeah, It will eventually come good. Yeah, but yeah. It's either going to have to spend the money or spend the time. That's the only way. No, no, for sure. Yeah. And it's something I think we've got a responsibility in the industry for mm -hmm. us that are kind of sometimes highlighted that we need to help the operators understand that mm -hmm. I've only got two things that are valuable. What their innate skill, mm -hmm. knowledge, and what they do is valuable. Mm -hmm. But on the whole, that can be replicated by by yeah. lots of people but whatever is as unique as about them is what they've got and their time is the only other thing they've got is valuable and how they apply that time is is up to them at the yeah. end of the day but there is things there that that time applied correctly will give them mm -hmm. a reward yeah but i do think from spending time with lots of operators discussing lots of operators meeting lots of operators at some of the places we've met them that there is an underappreciation of the journey mm -hmm. there is an underappreciation of this time yeah it's this expectation effort in, reward out straight away, mm -hmm. PPC type thing. Yeah. I would say that's totally be focused on that because you can do that. Get the inquiries, get them converted. That's what gives you the cash flow to survive. But if you've got the cash flow coming from the instant hits, that's when you start thinking about the long-term journey. That should give you the, the time to then yeah. do the organic stuff and the, the content. And, yeah. and the content. Mm -hmm. Because I have no idea how online is going to change going forward. The one thing I do know is changing faster than any of us can appreciate. Mm -hmm. I do think the way we're marketing at the moment as an industry across all the platforms, across organic, is going to be disrupted and changed, probably by something we're not seeing yeah. coming yeah. yet. And the only way I can defensively protect against that is to build a profile across online. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm not putting one platform above another, et cetera, et cetera. It's just I need to be spread across because I don't know how any of these are going to change yeah. and the new disruptors coming in. But the one thing I do know is I'm going to be disrupted. I'm going to be challenged. My route to market is going to get more difficult rather than mm -hmm. easier. Therefore, I have to build effort and time to making sure I've got – I'm building barriers or I'm trying to build a moat to stop yeah. – all of these changes jumping over the moat and disrupting mm -hmm. my route to business. Yeah. And that that's, you, you don't build a moat and you don't build a big walled castle in a small small amount of time. It takes a, a long period of time. Yeah. Uh, and I don't think anybody in the industry knows how we're going to be disrupted going forward. Mm -hmm. The one thing we do know is we're going to be yeah. disrupted. And most disruption tries to put things in between us <laughs> from our customers. Yeah. The disruption isn't helping us with customers, yeah, it's yeah. normally putting barriers mm -hmm. in between customers, yeah. and all, any tour and activity operator want as much direct contact with their customer mm -hmm. as possible. Uh, and LinkedIn is a, probably one of the best with Facebook to give you that direct one to one. Because yeah. it's your data, it's, it's you. It's, yeah, it's you speaking to yeah. another human yeah. being, albeit over a digital platform, yeah. but it's one to one uh, connections. Whereas a lot of the other ways at the moment, we've got level after level of level in between mm -hmm. us and, and your customer. Yeah. So, can, in summary, it's something to think about, but don't do it unless you're going to do it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I would say that for any platform, but at least no one has to worry about Google Plus anymore since that's. It. No, no, <laughs> and, that, and that's and that's that's my point. Spread because you don't know what's going to disappear. Yeah. And we put a lot of effort, a lot of time into Google Plus several years ago. Built up a big profile on it, thousands, tens of mm -hmm. thousands of followers, and Google Plus, poof, gone. Yeah, gone. And to be honest, 
of all the social platforms, the least return we ever got of any social platform was Google Plus for the effort and reward yeah, yeah. down. Yeah. It, it was not a, a rewarding mm -hmm. platform. Well, as Google admitted in the article recently, because they obviously it closed it down, was it was doomed to fail from the start. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. it just goes to show yeah. you. That, that was a platform that cost us time, money, yeah, yeah. effort. Yeah. It didn't give a reward. Yeah. But we're in business, that's the game. Yeah. But no, Peter, I find that fascinating. I'm definitely going to go and have a look at my, my LinkedIn profile. Uh, just make sure it's as optimised as much as possible because I know I haven't uh, probably looked at it in a good six months or so yeah. um, and go back to it. But no, I think I'm going to put more emphasis on it again now. So I appreciate your time. And, good. Uh, nice to meet you again. You too. You too.